somebody ought to know that God can work it out. And when you turn it over to the Lord, He can work it out. We'll bless His name. He can work it out. He can work it out. If you will turn it over to the Lord, He can work it out. God, our keeper, to Jesus, the Christ, our Savior and our Redeemer, the Holy Spirit, our comforter and guide, as Peter said on that Mount Transfiguration, Lord, it's just good to be here. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord on this glorious day that our God has made? Well, that sounds like about 10 of you. What about the rest of you? Are you just glad to be in God's house? I'd rather be in God's house than to be in any other place. God, we thank you now for the privilege of preaching. Speak to us and speak through us. Anoint these lips of clay that they may utter words of deliverance. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're grateful to God for our fellow yokemen of the gospel, co-laborers, those who share with us and spreading the good news of Jesus Christ, all missionaries, pastors, evangelists, we thank God for you on today. If you have your Bibles, will you go with me to the Gospel of Luke in chapter 8? The Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Luke in chapter 8. Thank you, LBC, for blessing our hearts on today. Let's begin at verse 40. Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 40. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house, for he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was, and she lay a dying. But as he thronged the, the people, as he went, the people thronged him. That's enough to preach for him right there. Keep your Bibles open because I want to just talk briefly from the other passages of Scripture. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age. She lay a dying, but as he went, the people thronged him. And I said they pressed upon him. They pressed around him. I want to talk about for the next moment of time, the father of great faith. A father of great faith. Ushers, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord and thank you kindly for ministering unto us today. On this day that we celebrate and we recognize and we honor our fathers, I'm thankful that we have an example of a father of faith written in this passage of scripture for today. I believe we'll look and listen. We'll learn a lot from this ruler of the synagogue by the name of Jairus. A man in the world who has been regarded as great men, great kings who have kept the peace or conquered territories. Generals, four-star generals who have been great leaders in battle athletes who have thrilled the spectators and men of great faith when we look in the scriptures you have men of great faith that Noah when you're obedient to God that you'll build an ark when there is no rain in the forecast a man of great faith Abraham who's willing to leave his rich father 
and leave his comfort zone, his surrounding, because he have faith in God Almighty, God of great faith. And then on today, we have this gentleman by the name of Jairus. You, you, in order to appreciate, you, you, you've got to go back when you get to the house. Go back and read this passage, this whole chapter, because Jesus is moving with so much action here, and there are so many narratives right here in chapter 8 that it just blows your mind, but it shows the authority that Jesus possesses. Uh, when you go back up to chapter, uh, the same chapter, verse 22, you'll find where Jesus get on the ship with his disciples. Now, walk with me, walk with me. Uh, Jesus is on this ship with his disciples because he had just instructed them, let us pass over to the other side. The Bible says while they were passing over this great body of water, Jesus falls asleep. In the bottom of the ship, Jesus falls asleep, needs some rest for his weary eyes and for his weary journey. He falls asleep. And the storm came up across the sea. And there was one by the name of Peter. Jesus, master, careth not that we perish. Jesus looked at the disciples and said, where is your faith? Oh, ye a little faith. Look at the authority of Jesus. The Bible said, Jesus simply says, help me out. Peace. You, you read that passage. Peace be still. He didn't have a healing line. He didn't have any oil. He didn't have to say it five or six times. He didn't have to scream it out. Jesus simply says, peace, be still. The Bible says that they looked at him and said, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? Let, let me ask you a question. How is it that the winds and the waves can obey Jesus, but Jesus gives us instruction? The, the winds and the waves obeyed him. Uh, it was a preacher in Alabama said the wind, he didn't realize that the wind had ears, but when they heard Jesus, they had to shut their big mouth and sit down because Jesus is a man of authority. Did not stop there when they crossed over that sea. Uh, the Bible says they met there met him a lunatic. Uh, this man had been had been locked up in chains and fetters, but this man was had so many demons uh, living on the inside of him that he would literally break the chain. Not only that, but the Bible said that he would live among the cemetery, among the tomb. Don't you know any joker that's sleeping in the cemetery is crazy as he can be? And he need an encounter with Jesus Christ. Y'all come on, talk to me. The Bible said that this, this joker would rather stay in the cemetery than to sleep in his king's side bed. That joker had some demons. Y'all not talking to me. Do, do you know some folk? Okay, let me move right along here. But the Bible says when Jesus stepped off the ship, check this out. The Bible said when Jesus stepped off the ship, this man recognized him and he cried out, Oh, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now, don't you know that if the demons cry out when they recognize Jesus, this Sunday morning right here at Lolo Baptist Church ought to have some Jesus lovers that when you recognize him, you ought to be able to say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me also. This man was a lunatic, and then all only that, he asked Jesus this question, did you come to torment me before my time? The Bible says, Jesus said, shut your mouth. Shut your big mouth. Zip your lip. Bob says that. Jesus asked the question, who are you? He said, we're legion, for we are many. Then they asked Jesus an interesting question. They said, can we go into the swine? Jesus said, get out of that man. And go into the swine. Uh, scripture declares that was about 2,000 head of hogs. Can you imagine all the chitlins, hog moms, bacon, hams, pig feet, hog head cheese? 
all the South. Y'all come on, talk to me. I noticed that when those evil spirits went into the swine, the Bible said they ran over a cliff. Jesus will do anything to save one soul. That's a message for somebody. He'll go to any expense to save one soul. He, he didn't really care about, about the pig feet. He didn't really care about the bacon. He really didn't care about the, the, the hog head cheese and the salad and, and the ham. He was concerned about one soul. It, it, isn't he amazing? There ought to be some believers that ought to say, I just thank God for Jesus and his saving power, his saving grace. This man literally wanted to follow Jesus wherever. Jesus says this. Jesus said, go back to your house. Go back to your home and tell them what great things that the Lord has done for you. I believe that if the Lord been good to you, you ought to be able to tell somebody. Or, or come on and talk to me. This man wanted to travel Jesus in Capernaum. He wanted to travel with Jesus in Galilee and Nazareth. Jesus said, go back home first. Every now and again, you need to make sure that the message of Jesus has stopped by your house first before you start going around. Come on, talk to me. Before you start going around the world, but make sure that those who are in your household, Father, make sure they know about Jesus. Go ahead and make that commitment like Joshua said. As for me in my house, we're going to serve the... It, it, this shouldn't be a hard sermon today if you'll say amen. amen. This father of great faith, uh, ruler of the synagogue, after Jesus has cast these evil spirits out, the Bible says that man went home. She's cast these spirits out. And I like with verse 4. That's where we pick up with our text today. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him. Let me ask you a question. Who are you waiting on this morning? Because if you're waiting on the preacher to bring a good sermon, you're waiting on the wrong person. If, you, if you're waiting on the choir to bring you a beautiful song and they, 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 they sing well, and if you're waiting on the deacon to pray this, this, this great prayer, you're waiting for the wrong thing. If you're not waiting on Jesus, you're waiting for the wrong thing. This is the reason why people come to church Sunday after Sunday. They come to church empty and they leave empty because they're looking for man to lift them up. Baby, the problem is you need to come waiting on. Can you help me say Jesus? Yeah, J-E-S-U-S. -S. I'm convinced this is the problem across America. We need more people lifting up Jesus and not our bishops. Jesus and not our apostles. Jesus and not our pastors. Jesus and not our churches. Jesus needs to be lifted up. Oh, praise his name. So you can lift your preacher up today and bring him back down tomorrow. But let me tell you something about Jesus. He said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Do I have anybody who made up your mind? Will you just help me lift up Jesus? Preachers, will you help me lift up Jesus? Deacons, will you help me lift up Jesus? Choir, will you help me lift up Jesus? Pew members, will you help me lift up Jesus? Oh, praise his name. Oh, let praise his name. Why lift him up? Because he has saving power. He has healing power. He has deliverance power. And my God can do what none all the other power can do. Oh, praise his name. No wonder, no wonder the songwriter said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If he's been good to you, you ought to say so. If you know he woke you up this morning, you ought to say so. If he gave you activity of your limb, you ought to say so. If he gave you joy in the midst of your sorrow, you ought to say so. When he made ways out of no way, you ought to say so. When he put healing in your body, you ought to say so. When you was down and he lifted you, you ought to say so. If you had more bills than you had money and the Lord made a way, you ought to say Yeah, 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 yeah. Do I have anybody that can say so? He's been good to me. 
He's better than Campbell Soup. He's um, um, good. He's better than Folger Coffee. He's good to the last drop. You ought to. But when I think about Jesus and what he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. And all to say so. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. So in our text, so in our text, this father, Jairus, come to Jesus. And he said, Jesus, I have a daughter. One daughter. My only daughter. That's at the house. She's about to die. I like this because there was others that Jairus could have sought. But he came to Jesus. Jesus is not just a doctor. Jesus is a healer. That, that, there's a difference in a healer and a doctor. See, see my doctor, uh, when I load this in his office and with his credentials on the wall, it says practicing medicine. That, that's the reason why they first have you to sit down and they call you a patient. Okay, 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 okay. Y- y'all with me? And, and, and so, 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 so when you go in your doctors, he, he says, I want you to check, take this. And when you come back, when you follow up, I need you to take some notes and tell me how you feel. And when you come back and say, well, doc, I took the medicine as you prescribed, but I- I'm still aching a little bit. So he'll go back and he'll pull, he'll pull his iPad off. And he said, now, what did you say? I said, I couldn't sleep at night. That medicine had me itching all night. He'll type that in there. He was itching. It, okay, what else? And I said, well, and I'm still having migraine head. He'll type that in there. And then he'll come back and say, well, just put that medicine that you had that you just went to Walgreens and you was in that line a long time at CVS. Just, just put that to the side and I want you to go back again. And I want you to try this out. Y'all come on, talk to me. And, and, and you come back and he said, I want you to follow up. Fill out the card, the reception to fill out the card. And you follow up. You say, well, doc, I, I took the medicine. He said, well, how do you feel? You said, well, you know, now my legs start hurting. So then he's like, what's the matter with this joker here? So he types it in. And he he says, I want you to go home. Take this. I want you to follow up. Come on, talk to me. And let me hold know how it works. And when you come back, I need you to follow up. Let me know how everything is going. And, and he'll say, and if that doesn't work, we're going to try. Can I tell you about my healer? There was a man who was blind and he could not see. My healer spit on the ground, took some mud, wiped it on his eyes. He said, I can see. I can see clearly now that the rain is gone. There was some gentlemen who had leprosy. They couldn't go into the town. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. By the time they made it to the tabernacle, to the priest, they were cleansed of their leprosy. One came back. He said, Jesus, I want to tell you, thank you because you healed me. I didn't have to try this medicine. I didn't have to try that medicine. But Jesus, you healed me. So why Jarius? display this type of faith he gives Jesus his request will you come to my house fathers that's that's the invitation that all of us ought to give make sure you invite Jesus into your house 
Come on, talk to me. I know you want your 70-inch flat screen TV by the time the NFL uh, football come back on, but make sure Jesus is in there before you get the flat screen on the wall. Y'all got quiet right along. I know, I know it's good to have your remote control and your, and your lazy boy chair, but make sure you got Jesus on the inside. Because there may be some time you won't be able to sleep at night. There are going to be some mountains that are too high. Some valleys are too low. And baby, that flat screen will not bring consolation to your soul. But I'm here to tell you about my Jesus. You can call on him in the midnight hour. And he'll rock you in the midnight hour. And he'll tell you that I am your own. He know how to wipe tears from your eyes. Okay. Jairus invited Jesus to the house. Check this out. Twelve-year-old daughter about to die. His only daughter. Text says while Jesus is en route to his house, there's a lady who's been sick for 12 years also. Had what is called an issue of blood. I know some of you looking around today, but can I tell you something? All of us got some issues. Uh huh. I know you're looking good and you're looking sanctified and dignified, cranktified and holified. But at the end of the day, all of us got some issues from, from the front door to the back door and everything in between. We all got some issues. The Bible says while Jesus is maneuvering and navigating through this crowd, there was this woman who touched him. She had said within herself, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. This is what I need you to see. Jarius is a patient of Jesus. Notice how patient. He has just asked Jesus to come to his house. And notice while Jesus is trying to get to Jarius' house, Somebody stops him. Had that been me, I said, Jesus, hold on, Jesus, they ought to turn. <laughs> Jesus, she broke in line. It's not her turn. Come on, talk to me. Okay, I, G, hey, Jesus, I asked you first. You know how we do sometime at church? That's my seat. I sit there. I got here first. Okay, let me move on. That went in my notes. Okay. Uh, Jesus, I submitted my request first. The Bible, the Bible never says, Jairus, Jairus never said a word. He simply waits on Jesus. Can I tell you something? That's a word for somebody because there are some folks in this house today that's been simply waiting on Jesus. Let, let me drop this with you. Your delay doesn't mean that you've been denied. Uh, uh, get, just, just go ahead and get comfortable while you're waiting on him. Uh, and, and let your faith build because, see, that really was a faith builder. See, while, while, while Jarius is looking and he's listening at this testimony, he's saying, okay, if he did it for her, he can do it for he can do it again and again and again. Oh, okay, the songwriter said it like this. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others. See, we, we got to understand this. Whenever God is blessing your neighbor, you don't have to start hating on them. That means he's in the neighborhood. Just hang around long enough. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. Just learn how to wait on him. Jairus is standing there waiting on Jesus while this lady is giving her testimony. Because the Bible says, Jesus said, who touched me? And then this lady came and she said, it was me, but Jesus. She said, but I've been. And you know when the sister start telling you her story, you might well take your time. The Bible says she told everything. She said, I went to this doctor and that doctor. And, and, and Mark, Mark, Mark's writing, Mark says, it grew worse. You, you know how sometimes you try to talk to people about your problem and their problem is worse? 
And then you, you talk to them about your problem, and guess what? Then they spread it with Lottie Dottie in. It just made matters that worse. Okay, okay. Look at Jairus, patiently waiting. Don't you know that when that sister was telling Jesus about how she went to that doctor, she said, Jesus, I went to this doctor across town. He didn't help me. And oh yeah, Jesus, and there was another appointment that I made one Monday. And I really thought that was going to work. And then Jesus, within the last 12 years, let me tell you something else. I spent all my money Jesus, I checked my debit card. I, I checked my savings. I checked my Gucci bag, my pocketbook. I checked all my hidden compartments. And I spent everything. This sister was just laying it out. She had an opportunity to talk to Jesus. Scripture says she told him everything. And when they said everything, everything. Had that been me, I would say, sister, can you just get Jesus' email and text him and email him later on? My daughter is at the house about to die. I need Jesus because I got him first. I'm just talking about me. I know some of you, you would have patiently waited and it, with your sanctified self, you just would have said, praise the Lord, sister. We're praying with you. We understand. We, we understand, darling. Praise the Lord. But Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue, he heard Jesus the other day while he was there in the synagogue, That's, you'll find this in Luke chapter 4, about verse uh, 8 and 9 or 18 and 19, somewhere there. But anyway, Jesus came to the synagogue, and this is what Jesus said. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recover his sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Jairus heard Jesus say that at the temple, so he said, I'm going to wait on him. No one had ever seen Jarius act this way. Jarius had always been the type that was cool, calm, and collected. Rather than having it all together, he was falling apart. Rather than being in charge, his world was spinning out of control. And as hard as he tried, there was nothing he could do about his 12-year-old daughter that was dying. His darling daughter that had brought him and his wife so much joy for the last 12 years was about to leave this world and there was nothing he can do. And on top of that, this lady is giving Jesus her long, drawn out testimony. But the scripture says, that Jairus fell at the feet of Jesus. He fell at the master's feet with humility and he worshiped him. Here it is right here. Sometimes, I need you to listen to this. Sometimes your deliverance might look like a dilemma. But you have to have faith just like Jairus, that no matter how long it take, Jesus is going to work it out. No, no matter how long it takes, he's going to work it out. In his own time, in his own way, he's going to work this thing out. And the scripture says, I got to wrap this thing up. And the scripture says, while he's standing there with Jesus, while this lady is talking, the disciples are talking, then the servants came and says, don't, don't bother Jesus. <laughs> See, really, truly, Jairus already knew something had happened. 
Because when folk bring you bad news like that, you can look on their faces. <laughs> when they at, are you sitting down? Where are you right now? Li, 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 don't, don't, don't take me all around Adeline's house. and it, just, just go ahead and bring me the news. Are you sitting down? Do you have a glass of water? Do you have a towel? Who's with you? Just, just bring me the bad news. If you're gonna bring it to me. <laughs> they said, trouble not the master. She's dead. Jesus said, be of good cheer. Don't be afraid. I got this. Believe on me. I got this. Okay, Jesus. Let me show you something. The Bible says they went to Jairus' house. Notice the authority Jairus gives to Jesus. Check this out. The Bible says the folks that were already in the room with his daughter, Jesus said, get on out of here. Come on, talk to him. Can I tell you something? If you will allow Jesus to be Lord of your house, there are some folks he's going to tell you to get out of your life and get out of your house. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. When you allow him to be Lord of your life, there are some folks that, that you are hanging around with that, that, that are dying, that are helping your dying situation. You need some life, and you need somebody who's going to help you out. You don't need, come on, talk to him. You don't need, if you're trying to get rich, you don't need to be hanging around broke folks. Y'all gonna catch that a little bit. Oh, okay. If you're trying to get rich, you don't need to be hanging around folks who don't go to work at all. Okay, okay. If, you, if you're trying to get a hookup with a young lady, you don't need to be hanging around somebody who, 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 who can't hold a girl uh, for one year. You, you need to hang with somebody who know how to hang, hang hold a girl for 50 years. Hey, Amen. You been married 50 years? What's the secret? Come on, talk to me. You hanging out with old, old Bobo and them. Who live with mom and them. Who driving mom and them car. Eating mom and them food. Then you talking about, I want to go somewhere in life. You going to go somewhere in life. <laughs> Jarius give Jesus the authority to put anything out of his house that doesn't need to be there. The mother and the father, Peter, James, and John, because they were Jesus' ride or die. I can see old brother Peter probably said, I'm going to hold the door. And ain't nobody getting back in here. Because you know sometime, you know sometime, uh, uh, African-American, when you ask them to do something, they're going to tell I don't, I don't know who he think he is. This ain't even his house. Going to tell me to get out? Peter said, that's all right. You won't come back up in here. If Jesus ain't get out, you ain't come back up in here. I'm standing at this door. If Jesus ain't stay out, you better stay out. I don't care if he say the midnight. Okay, let me go on. The Bible says, Jesus simply says, damsel, arise. He didn't have to shake her. He didn't have to roll her. He didn't have to pour nothing on her. But because of his authority. But most of all, the faith of that father having the confidence that Jesus is going to work this thing out. Even when I've been delayed, he's going to work it out because I've been hearing about this Jesus and there's something about this Jesus that I found out that whenever I'm blind, he has the power to lead me. When I'm hungry, he know how to feed me. When I am weak, he know how to strengthen me. Does anybody know about this Jesus? When I'm persecuted, he know how to shield me. When I'm confused, he know how to direct me when I fall he know how to lift me when I'm afraid he know how to give me courage this deliverance on this day looked like a dilemma but can I tell you something that wasn't the only day on Father's Day that looked like a dilemma how do you know well they tell me it was over 2,000 years ago that a father sent his son to a mean cruel world Y'all not talking to me. Oh, he sent him for deliverance, but it looked like dilemma. 
Yeah, yeah, they said he walked the dusty shores of Galilee and he sailed on another man's ship. He rode another man's donkey, preached in another man's synagogue, but I'm glad that's not how the story ends. They brought him before old Pontius Pilate, and I'm here to tell you, it looks like the limo right about now. Pilate said, I can't find no fault in this man. What do y'all want me to do with this man, Jesus? They say, crucify this man. Look at the dark Father's Day right there. The Bible said they hung him high, stretched him wide between two thieves. Yeah, I can see my Savior with that crown on his head, a crown of thorns. I can see my Savior with the nails in his hand. I can see my Savior with the nails in his feet. And I heard him say, Father, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. The Bible said that he gave up the ghost. This day of deliverance looks like a dilemma. But can I tell you something? The Bible says, after three days and three nights, God raised Jesus from the dead. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. That's not how the story ends. Got up with all power in his hand. Holy Ghost power. Preaching power. Singing power. Deliverance power. And after 40 days of preaching around Jerusalem and Galilee, the Bible said he ascended into the heavens. Two men in white apparel say, ye men of Galilee, why stand and hear ye gaze him? This same Jesus that you see leaving here, this same Jesus, he's coming back one day. Do I have anybody in the house that can say, when he come back, I want to tell him, thank you how you brought me over. Thank you for being my bridge over troubled waters. Thank you for being my leaning post. Thank you for being my father for the fatherless. Thank you for being my mother for the motherless. And I know he's all right. Doors of the church is open. Doors of the church is open as we extend an invitation to you. Jesus is standing with our stretched hands. He's simply saying, he that coming to me, I don't know why I cast you out. My friend, today is a good day to give Jesus your heart, give him your life. Be like Jairus. Jesus, I give you the key to my house. Not only are you invited to my house, but you're invited to put anything out that's not pleasing in your sight. My friend, it's not where you're coming from, but it's who you're coming to. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock and if any man hear my voice, and open up, he said, I come and sup with you. Would you stand all over this sanctuary today as we extend such an invitation? You don't have a church home? We'd like for you to unite with us today. Pray about it.
I just carried it 